Hello all and welcome to my new YouTube channel, Danny B Trains. My name is Danny B and if you like NASCAR, you might know me from my main channel, Danny B Talks. I posted a video there recently where I talked about my enjoyment of all things trains, all the way from watching real trains to model railroading and also virtual railroading on Trains 22. While there was a good amount of crossover there, I understand how the YouTube algorithm works and no matter how much I'd love to post content on a channel that is already monetized and get paid for it, the content will suffer if I only posted this type of content on a channel built primarily for NASCAR interest. Therefore, welcome to Danny B Trains, a safe place for me to showcase anything I find interesting dealing with all things railroad, and primarily on this channel, you can expect to see me getting into Trains 22. I've been playing Trains on and off for roughly 15 years or more in various versions, and I only just recently went from Trains 2012 to Trains 22, and I am immensely happy with the way the latest games play. So. I am currently working on two projects. One is a one-to-one -one scale replica of the real-life CSX mainline connecting Nashville, Tennessee to Louisville, Kentucky. Right now, we are working on the town of Hendersonville, Tennessee. I chose to start out right here because I live here. This is where I see trains pass through and what a better place to start than right where you live. This one will obviously take me the most time to complete, and we will get into that on future videos here on this channel, but for today, we're taking a look at a new freeform project I had just started because I honestly needed something to change pace from the daunting task of trying to just replicate real life. As fun as that is, I just needed a smaller project that I could just simply have fun on and be as creative as I wanted to be, and thus, we now have the HO Scale Spring Valley layout. Now, the name Spring Valley, to my knowledge, is not a real place, and nor is it a real railroad, but I have always liked that name. Affectionately, I call my own in-scale layout the Spring Valley Railroad as well. So, I've just always liked that name, and we're going to stick with it. I think it sounds cool. Now, to give a brief layout overview, this layout takes place in two rather long connecting rooms of a typical American home. I don't know what approximate measurements of bench work would be for something like this, but remember, this is just freeform and we're having fun here because it's not a real model railroad, it's just fun in trains. Always remember that. That should be like rule number one of playing trains. We start out though in a small yet bubbling urban area that will really serve as the centerpiece of this layout. And when it comes to geographical landscape of Spring Valley, I've always pictured it in the Eastern Tennessee slash Western North Carolina region of the Appalachian Mountains, mainly because I grew up there and I love everything about that general area. So in the case of a model railroad, where I can make whatever I want, I choose to model a fictional area where I am from. And in a way, this is kind of reminding me of certain parts of downtown Knoxville, Tennessee so far. And while I don't want to just call it Knoxville per se, I can't help but not love that name, so I think I'll call this something very similar, Knotsville. That's spelled K-N-O-T-S-V-I-L-L-E. So welcome to the town of Knotsville, everyone. As far as assets go, I am using the yarn, roads, and sidewalks assets within trains with a variety of buildings, but so far, the biggest part of this build has utilized assets made by Approach Medium. And by the way, I love the videos from Approach Medium, and it makes me sad to see he doesn't upload anymore. I only recently found him, but I have been binge-watching many of his route builds, and essentially, with this channel, I'd really like to capture a similar feel from his channel with my own creativity added. Anyways, for the town of Knottsville, so far we have just a couple of roads set up with quite a few intersections and there will be a lot of older downtown areas mixed in with some newer, more modern retail establishments set up as the area is progressing into the future. In my cinematics, I have a Norfolk Southern High Hood local running, but that's not to say that this layout will specifically run local trains. Right now, the general flow of this layout is simply just for running trains. There really is no operational form right now, but even in my actual end scale layout, it's mainly a looping layout simply to create scenes and, and creative landscaping. So for now, we're pretty much doing the same here, and maybe in time, I can be 
be creative and think of operational settings for a layout like this, but as the train exits Knoxville, it goes into the next room, and I fully intend for the trains to pass through tunnels when connecting to the next room each time. It's what would be done in reality of a model railroad like this if it was being built, so it just makes sense here. And the next room specifically is one of my most favorite things on this layout, and that is a loop. This loop is inspired by the Hawassi Loop in southeastern Tennessee. I have recently took a ride on the Hawassi Loop, and having seen it in person, it is so impressive in the engineering that goes into a looping railroad. The small local train that you are seeing now really does not give you the full scale of this amazing design, but I have run a much longer train through the loop to test it, and seeing the long train snake through the loop is really impressive, and the loop is a good way to see trains spend a lot more time in a smaller space of the layout while also turning the train to follow the layout. After the train loops through the mountain, it crosses over the tracks from a bridge where it goes to a higher level of the railroad, and from there the trains are going to pass back behind the city of Knott'sville. As you can kind of see, I've got a stone retaining wall started. And this is going to really define the fact that this area, much like the terrain in the loops and other places, used to be mountainous. And man has come through and cut out the land to define where the town sits today. Utilizing retaining walls has been a big tool I have found to properly do scenes like this where you want a train to pass through but also above certain terrains. Now once we are through Knott'sville once again, I didn't want to just do another loop like the one similar to the Hawassi loop. Instead, I elected for more of a snaking loop that actually goes up in grade before coming back down grade. And this one, well, it honestly kind of reminds me of the old fort loops located in North Carolina. Much like the other loop in this layout, this is a great way to keep trains in an area of the layout for a longer period of time before passing for the tunnel back into the other room. As we enter the other room, when I was constructing this, I built an extra line of table here, and I am not sure what this area will be in the long run, but for now, trains had this really cool model of an Amazon distribution facility that is just massive. So in my mind, I thought this was really cool. This would be one of those things that if a real model railroad was working on it, this would be one of those really cool structures that is big and would take a while to create. So you need a big area to display that really cool project that you completed. But I don't know, maybe that will change in time. I just thought this seemed really cool for now. Then to the right of the Amazon facility, there is a massive mountain with large peaks that completely hides the railroad on the other side. So the train just casually makes its way through the curb. No crazy loops this time, it's just a simple trip back down the grade, and when we go back through the tunnel, we return to the city of Knott'sville where we started. So yeah, that is the HO scale Spring Valley Railroad so far. I'm really excited to start this project. Like I said, I needed something that I can just be creative with, and this gave me the opportunity to do just that. I didn't want to bore you all too much with creating this progress so far in episode 1. I felt it would be better for me to get a general grasp on the basic layout before we really start detailing things in future videos. But yeah, that'll do it for episode number 1. If you're new, which you likely all are because I just started this channel, hey, hit subscribe because I'd love to have you join me for more progress videos on this layout and trains and we will eventually dive into that huge one-to-one -one scale project of the Nashville to Louisville line. I am certain that will be the main juice for this channel in terms of content in the long run. But until next time, this has been Danny B, and I hope you have a great day. Bye guys.